What's good, Wage and World? It's your boy, Five Star in Vegas, broadcasting live as always. The Stumbling and Bad in with my co host, my guy, only Sacramento Kings fan that I know. What's good, Spread? How are you this morning? Oh, I'm doing great, man. It's a beautiful sunny day up here in California, but we're getting more rain this weekend, which is exactly what we need because <laughs> we've been in a drought here in California for a while. But uh, also looking forward to some exciting basketball action tonight. How you doing? Man, I'm really good. There's so much going on. Been on the tennis this morning. Uh, we got some conference tournaments that started. Uh, the Big South is going right now. I got it up on the tube in the background watching it. Um, UNC Asheville and uh, Charleston Southern. Um, trying to keep my eyes on Arch Madness as well because I'm uh, always invested in that tournament. It's one of my favorite ones that they have out in St. Louis. Um, out of the Missouri Valley Conference. So it's a real busy morning, man. Let's uh, go on and knock this out and let's keep winning. That, that's fine. We'll get the people, the winners quick and efficiently. But first, uh, we're going to go over the past uh, 2 0 yesterday on the wagering world. I hope you parlayed those suckers. The Golden State Warriors, they won straight up. Uh, hey, yep. it was a tight game in the first half, uh, but they smacked them in the second half. It was like 70 to 37 or 70 to 30. It, I mean, they just blew them away. And nice for me. I got to go to bed early. But um, what were your thoughts mainly? Okay, so we know the Warriors are good at home. Uh, we know the Warriors are missing their two best players. So, hey, you know, obviously good one for the Warriors. What are your thoughts here on the Clippers as they lose another game? And not only do they lose, I mean, this is probably their worst loss since adding Westbrook. I, I no longer take the Clippers serious. <laughs> I just – it's I can't take them serious until they show me something else. I'm tired of making excuses for – uh, my guy Ty Lu and for uh, Kyrie Leonard and for Paul George. Sometimes I'm starting to think that these guys are just happy that uh, they were able to get back into the L.A. area. Uh, you know they're making plenty of money. So um, a lot of times people forget these guys are paid to play, not to win. And um, the Clippers have been a real disappointment since they formed that team. Uh, the Warriors did what the Warriors do. We were able to get that one, as you said, uh, they scored, uh, I think, 42 points in the third quarter. Just uh, looked like the old Warriors coming out the half. And I'll be interested to see how they respond tonight because I actually like the Pelicans tonight uh, against them plus the four. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how that goes. Um, as far as the Clippers go, I think LeBron James got people twisted, man. Nobody's dominating in their early 30s, right? And right. when you traded for Paul George and you gave away all the young talent, I mean, you look at Shea Gillis Alexander, you don't think they'd rather have him right now? Um, yeah. You know, just because LeBron was able to dominate in his 30s, that's not normal. And I think we've seen some slippage, uh, especially from Paul George. And I know he can still put the ball through the basket, uh, but he's not just that beast he was defensively, where he was just that great yeah. two-way player, right? Back when he was on, like, yeah. the Indiana Pacers and his time with the Thunder – um, so what's happening is you got these guys with the big names, but their game isn't necessarily corresponding. If I'm building a team, I want my players between 25 and 29, unless they're LeBron James, <laughs> right? Right, right, right. <laughs> he, he can play until he's like 45. The guy, he doesn't, no rules count for him. Um, right. so it will be interesting to see, of course, uh, once the playoffs come, there's a little more rest. Maybe these older guys can turn it around. So we don't want to write them off just because of a losing streak and obviously trying to integrate a new player, but not looking good for the Clippers, and they now fall to seventh place in the Western Conference. They'd be a playing team if the season ended today, but that wasn't the only win we had. The Arizona Wildcats uh, get it done yesterday. You had eyes on that game. What did you see? Just what I expected, dominance from Arizona. I knew that they were going to be ticked um, due to the fact that they lost with that uh, half-court buzzer beater to their uh, rival, uh, Arizona State. Um, they have a great history against USC. Uh, they smacked them early in the year, and I think they won three straight. But the most impressive thing about this run um, that their coaches had over the two seasons uh, after taking over at Arizona and leaving Gonzaga is that, he, like I told you yesterday, he never lost two games in a row, and they weren't um, even considering it uh, last night. Just a great game. Uh, they dominated from tip all the way to the finish, and uh, it was an easy one for us. All right, so we had two easy winners today. Uh, let's do it again. Right now, let's dive into the present. A uh, couple fun things going on. So the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament is going on. Drake yeah. is minus 11 versus Murray State. What do you think there? 
Yeah, uh, as I told you, the Missouri Valley Conference is one of those conferences that I really enjoy watching basketball uh, in that conference. Uh, those guys uh, play hard, and every year they go to St. Louis and they have a tournament, and I'm so fond of it because when I was young, I actually attended the tournament with a friend of mine that uh, is from the East St. Louis area. So uh, I have a, a real fondness for uh, what they call arch madness because it's by the arch <laughs> of St. Louis. I like yeah. that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Drake is a really good team, man. Really, really good team. One of those teams that if they get in the tournament, which they most likely will, um, I don't know if an at large, they should because of their name could go get in as an at large. But even if they just win the tournament, of course, it's the automatic entry. Uh, it's a difficult field that they're facing. But uh, tonight they should be able to handle the Murray State pretty easily. Drake is a really, really, really good team, man. They're uh, 24 and 7 on the year, 14 and 1 at home. Um, just with a, a lot of really good players on that team, man. They have a lot of veterans, uh, a lot of guys who have been starters for multiple seasons there. So um, I, I really think that Drake is able to uh, pull away at the end on this game and cover the 11. Uh, and they're one of my favorites uh, to win uh, that conference tournament. They actually are the favorites, slightly um, hedging Bradley and uh, Indiana State. All right. Uh, Southern Illinois will also take on Missouri State. What are your thoughts there? This one is going to be a really good game. Southern Illinois has beaten um, Missouri State the last two times that these teams have faced off. And, um, for some reason, the line's still three. And it's because Missouri State is a really long athletic team. They can put the ball in the basket. They play D. Uh, they play at a real high tempo and like to get out uh, off the turnovers and get into transition. And I think that they're going to give Southern Illinois some issues tonight. I know that Southern Illinois uh, has a really impressive record. They're 22 and 9, whereas the Missouri State is only 17 and 4. Um, but also against the spread, Missouri State's 14 and 14, whereas uh, Southern Illinois is only 12 and 17. And um, they're 3 and 7 against the spread in the last 10. So um, I, I really like Missouri State in this game, and I'm actually going to give it out of the bottom parlay. All right. Uh, let's move on to the National Basketball Association. Some interesting games tonight. Uh, there's a lot of fun. And. Uh, I'm going to – oh, no, you put it on there. But we'll start with the Knicks and the Heat. A, a, yeah. a rivalry from our childhood, right? Uh, a, lot, a lot of fun when they had Alonzo Mourning and, and Pat Riley. Okay. Uh, so now these two teams played. The Knicks have won seven games in a row, but they're in Miami, which is a tough place to play, against the Heat team that I think is being a little underrated on the regular season because I think they have a low ceiling for the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. Because we don't really right. consider them to be a championship contender. Uh, and, and I think that's rightfully so. I think they're going to have problems getting past the juggernauts in the East, namely Milwaukee and Boston. Uh, but this is still a good regular season team. Knicks are laying points on the road on the strength of the fact they've won seven in a row since reuniting the Villanova duo of Josh Hart and Jalen Brunson. What are your thoughts here? Can the Knicks get it done down in Miami? Uh, the Knicks beat them earlier this year. The Knicks are definitely rolling. What have won now? Seven straight, is that right? Seven straight, and they've won on February 2nd, 106-104, but that game was in the Seven year. straight. Uh, we know that Miami's struggling. What have they lost? Five of the last six, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, they won at Philadelphia, and then Philadelphia went right back down to South Beach and smacked them all over the court um, yeah. without Embiid. So, um, like we always talk about, as long as we don't get the Miami flu involved, <laughs> which uh, I don't think is much as um, a factor with New York because New right, York is you know, New York is more fun than Miami. <laughs> I don't yeah, know about well, more not fun, only right? that, I don't level. know about more fun, but it's a it's a common trip. Most New Yorkers are in Miami a lot, you know. It's yeah. a pretty common trip for them, so I'm sure that they get a chance to shoot down the words, and you got a West Coast team that. Uh, doesn't go across the country and get a chance to, you know, enjoy Miami. But I, I really think that the Knicks are the better team right now, man. And this line is showing. When have you ever saw the Knicks minus three at Miami? You know, so right. I'll be really interested to see how this game go. But the line saying that uh, the Knicks should win this game, man, um, as unfathomable as it may sound, this is not your uh, father's Knicks. So uh, maybe the Knicks have turned the corner. They have a uh, a guy I really respect running the things over there with um the the guy worldwide. He's a uh, 
been in Houston, been around everywhere. People in the entertainment world know him from there and the sports world. And he's doing a, a really good job as the general manager over there with him and Leon Rose, which is his buddy that he brought along and made the GM. So uh, see if, uh, you know, worldwide help and you know, uh, Leon Rose can make the Knicks into a real contender. Yeah, I think, you know, they're still a piece away. But the thing is, if you're you're a star on the move, you got to think and you say, hey, if I join that group, uh, I could contend for a title. And winning in New York is going to be worth a lot more just because they're so starved for a winner uh, there. It'd be interesting to see how that game turns out. Uh, it's always tough. I, I love betting the Heat at home. Uh, they're yeah. catching points. So uh, I'll be interested to see how uh, that one turns out. But we have a fun slate tonight. A game that's kind of flying under the radar, and I'm glad that you put it on our docket to talk about today, though, because it's the number two team in the West versus the number one team in the West, right? And I know the Lakers aren't involved, right? And Kevin Durant's not playing, right? So nobody's going to talk about it because nobody likes Jokic. And, you know, John Morant's become kind of like the, the, the player you love to hate in the NBA, and kind of rightfully so. The guy's got to get his act together. Uh, but the Immaturity. Immaturity, yeah. just immaturity, immaturity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, a couple of n- not necessarily popular teams, but teams that have been winning. Second place in the West, first place in the West. Grizzlies head to Denver to take on the Nuggets. They stuck us here with this minus five line. Uh, I think that's a pretty appropriate line. What are your thoughts here uh, when John Morant travels to take on Nikola Jokic? I'll be playing this game. I'm going to go with the Grizzlies plus the points on this game. Um, the Grizzlies dominated uh, the Nuggets the last time they played. I know the Nuggets are really a good home team, but I think that uh, Jokic has a problems, has real problems dealing with uh, that Grizzlies defense and the way that Taylor Jenkins designs things. It gives him his most issues out of probably every team uh, in the NBA. Uh 15 points is unheard of for Jokic, man. He was a non-factor in Memphis, and I think that uh, even though you can't stop him, I think they contain him, and they make it where the others have to have a big game. And if uh, we don't see a big game by Jamal Murray, uh, Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon is out, then uh, I think – So Aaron Gordon got upgraded to probable. Just want to let you know He might play. Okay, he might play. For my breakdown, I think Aaron Gordon's important here. Very important because he's the guy that's going to get scrappy and he's athletic. You know, the – the Nuggets yeah. play a real uh, free-flowing, uh, almost Euro-style basketball, just really intelligent, make great shots, run great plays, run great sets. Uh, Memphis likes to, you know, scruff it up, play a little, you know, physical, uh, play good defense and get out in transition and run and use the athleticism. And um, they're going to need Aaron Gordon to, to match up with those guys. But early, I definitely like uh, the Grizzlies. I will be playing that game, Grizzlies plus I think I saw six now, so Grizzlies plus six. I will be playing some national. I like TV. six so much better yeah. than five here. Yeah. And I know yeah. when I played the Celtics a couple nights ago, right? It was the one time they didn't foul through, right? Um, <laughs> because it was eleven <laughs> seconds to go, down by Crazy. four, and, and the Cavaliers couldn't get that foul off. But most of the times when you watch, they'll they'll foul through that five if it doesn't come down to it. So six is such a nice nicer number to get. Two keys for me on that game. Number one, I want to see Aaron Gordon out there. He's missed some time, and I hope that that if he does play, he's 100% healthy and he's not dragging himself out there too early. Second Mm -hmm. to me is the shooting percentage of Michael Porter. If Michael Porter is shooting 50% from the field, I think the Nuggets have have a good chance to win. Uh, He's a guy that can either give you a big lead or or shoot you out of a game, right? (laughs) So, uh, you know, and and I don't – I wouldn't want my money to come down to Michael Porter Jr. because he's so inconsistent. Uh, I think it's going to be another fun game. I haven't run my numbers yet, but I'm pretty excited to, uh, to to see how that game goes. And that game will definitely be on my TV. One other thing to note, it's an ESPN game, right? And what have you been telling me about those? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so I haven't I'm telling you, the pub is going to be on the Nuggets, man. Take the grids so to the too, point. Right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The pub is uh, going to be all on the Nuggets. All right. So, uh, you know, a little spoiler alert. I don't have a place for either of those games for the ball and parlay, but it is time. We got to continue uh, on our winning ways. Ball and parlay. Go ahead. Uh, lead us off here. Yeah, I'm, we're going to go to, like I said, Arch Madness. I love the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. And uh, we're going to go with the strange number. You know, when the numbers don't look right, that means you got to pay attention to it and see what's going on. And for some reason, uh, Southern Illinois is only uh, minus three 
against Missouri State, even though they've dominated them. Um, the last time that they played each other, um, Missouri State won by 20. I remember because I watched that game. It was close in the first half, second half, Southern, Southern Illinois just smoked them. And then Southern Illinois also went to Missouri uh, State earlier in the year and uh, were able to defeat them by four points. So they're 2-0 against them this year. They're a much better team. They got a better record overall. They got a better conference record, but still we're only seeing it three. And the reason why, because Southern Illinois has dominated this team in this line makes no sense at all, but I have seen both these teams play. And Southern Illinois has a real baller in Domask. Besides that guy, their international player, who's a forward, is about 6'6". Six, six. The rest of their team is pretty short and pretty unathletic. Um, and I like Missouri State starting five. They cannot get in foul trouble, though, because they play their guys extensive minutes. Each of their starters um, plays about 30 minutes. Um, but their five are really explosive, tall, athletic guys who can put the ball in the hole. Uh, Mason, Mayo, Mokbo, they all can shoot. Um, high percentages from the threes and I just think that this number is real fishy so we're gonna go with Missouri State plus three and I would not be surprised at all if Missouri State pulls the outright in this game also we're gonna go uh, with the uh, San Antonio Brahms and Houston Roughnecks going over it's 35 and a half spread uh, uh, it's not 36 and a half and that's my fault I sent you that it's 35 and a half uh, we're gonna go with uh, that XFL game Sunday, it'll be the primetime game uh, rivalry uh, that's put in between uh, the San Antonio Brahms, coached by Heinz Ward. The coach for the Houston Roughnecks is Wade Phillips. So you got Wade Phillips against Heinz Ward. You got two of the better quarterbacks in the league in this matchup. You got San Antonio Brahms has Jack Cohn from uh, Notre Dame, who was a really good player. And uh, Brandon Silvers is the quarterback uh, for uh, the Roughnecks, but they run a dual quarterback they bring in Cole McDonald and do some really nice things um, around the goal line with him and I think that both these teams are going to be able to put up points both their defenses are solid but uh, both these teams scored 30 points last week and I think they're kind of both turning the corner on their offense they both have good weapons on the outside like I said it's going to be a robbery game so they're going to be giving their best when you got San Antonio against Houston uh, going right down I-10 so we're going to go with uh, the over on that Footing rivalry between the Rough Knicks and the Brahms uh, over 35 and a half guys. So I'm going with Missouri State plus three tonight and uh, the XFL on Sunday over 35 and a half. What you got, Spirit? Oh, but before I get my pick, I got to talk to you because we haven't talked about this yet. What are your thoughts on the XFL overall, uh, the level of football, and do you think it's viable? Do you think it'll catch on with the American public? It's been decent. I need some more better quarterback play. But overall, um, the coaches are doing a really good job of having those guys prepared. Um, it's, it's definitely not looking like amateur ball. It's looking like a professional uh, game out there. But the, the thing is, like I said, they just got to get better quarterback play. Because as you and I know, it's just not enough quarterbacks in the world. Uh, any quarterback that can play uh, is going to be in the National Football League. So uh, hopefully, you know, uh, as time goes on, it becomes a bigger thing and maybe they can be – um, maybe like the USFL was where they could challenge the NFL for uh, a couple of those uh, top quarterbacks when it comes to draft time. All right, we'll see how the XFL does because it would be nice to have a spring league uh, that people care about. Uh, so I don't like the props as much. Usually I'm a sides and totals guy, but this is my local guy, and, and this number is just wrong. Right. Did De'Aaron Fox, okay, so the one I'm giving out, it's at the bottom of the screen, De'Aaron Fox over 30.5, 34.5 points plus assists. He's yeah. gone over 30 points in this last eight games, just on points. Just He's points gone alone. over this number that's set in eight games in a row. I mean, I thought it should have been 37, 38. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, because he's averaging 31 points per game and about five assists per game over the, the last eight games. Uh, <laughs> not to mention, this is against the Los Angeles Clippers. Last time these two teams played, they set they set a record for scoring. They had 341 right. points total, right? Right, it's right. No, no defense. <laughs> yeah, it's a tired Clippers. I don't think Kawhi Leonard's going to be out there uh, tonight. Paul George might miss as well. Uh, it's a great spot for the Kings. And I just, you know, normally I give out a side or a total here. Uh, but they just messed this one up, and it just stood out to me as so wrong here. 
Um, so I'm going De'Aaron Fox over 34.5 points and assists. And I know that you're happy to see me give that out, right? Because you've been big on De'Aaron Fox since we've talked. And you said, yes. hey, they made the right call choosing Fox over Halliburton. At the yep. time, I was a little skeptical, and I still think Halliburton's going to be a great player. But Fox is that dude. I'm really happy to have him here in Sacramento. I think he's going to have a great night. Yeah, I know that just because I followed Fox all the way since high school. He's always been a winning player. He's always been a guy who was a, a, a tractor and not a trailer. He led, yeah. he leads his team. You know, he's always been that type of guy. And he just he got a little disinterested because of the winning. I'm so glad that the GM sat down with him. They made the decision. He probably told him, like, hey, man, if you guys don't want to win, get me up out of here. And they decided to change things around. They gave him a great lineup. They're one of the deepest team. He seems so happy that he got his boy Monk over there with him now. And uh, he's balling out of control, but I always knew he had this in him. As you remember, Magic Johnson wanted to take him. He didn't want Lonzo Ball. You know right. what I'm saying? Well, sure I mean, I lost that year. I took the UCLA to win it all that year. I mean, of course, it was a 5-1 to one or an 8-1, to one, right? I mean, it had a nice number there. But I watched Fox just dominate Lonzo. Dominate I mean, that wasn't Lonzo. even close in the tournament. Yeah, it's not even close because, one, he has a lot more heart. He, he's, he's, he's more competitive. We know Fox, now that you've been watching him a couple years in a row, you know how he gets. He's very competitive. Yeah. And first step, unbelievable. Way quicker first step than Lonzo. Better shooter than Lonzo. Better passer than Lonzo. You know, it's like, you know, it's really no comparison and you know, Magic Johnson was wise enough to try to tell the Lakers that as a player, uh, ex-superstar player, you know, that played the position, but they didn't listen. And um, it ended up working okay for them. They were able to get D'Angelo Russell back now. But I guarantee you the Lakers wish they would have took Fox instead of Lonzo Ball. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah. I, we mispriced the number tonight, but we're going to take advantage of that. And, and until they fix that, uh, I'll be hammering that problem. All right, man. So, we got Fox tonight. We got... Uh, so, uh, uh, Missouri State part. We got Missouri State uh, with the plus three on the funny bunny number, and we got San Antonio and Houston in the XFL over 35 and a half. Let's keep this winning going, guys. We'll see you guys on Monday. We hope you guys have a great weekend. Best of luck to you all. We got all these conference tournaments coming up uh, very soon. It's just a great time to be alive. Great time to best sports. It's spring, so the weather's immaculate. Anything for the people spread before we get out of here? Now, let's have a winning weekend. All right, guys. Best of luck to y'all. We'll see you Monday.